Hey guys, welcome back to GS Lovers YouTube channel. I'm Neha, I'm the host of GS Lovers. If you are new here, I will be dropping all the relevant links related to GS Lovers. You can go and check them. Today's video is on the topic on which few people requested me to make, which is promises in JavaScript. Nowadays, you must be hearing a lot about promises. And yes, it is one of the most confusing topic and more debatable topic also. So I will try in this video to explain you. Uh, do let me know your feedback and suggestion below this video. Okay, so first thing is what is promise is in JavaScript. Before getting into this, we need to understand two related concept with promises, which is async code and callbacks. Okay, so what is async co code and what is callback? In JavaScript, uh, the JavaScript is a single thread process scripting language, which means that it will execute one line after one line and it will got stuck if a particular line is not executed fully. Although this is a blessing for developers, but this is also a nightmare because the way the web browser or web development has been changed, we are working a lot with the HS data, which means that there would be the possibility when the JavaScript processor is reaching to the Ajax call that code will stuck there unless and until it is getting the response from the server which means your end user will be staring at the black screen or at the loader which is again a bad user experience so yes this become a nightmare so what is the solution the solution is async code what async code says is that the processor will not wait if there is some Ajax code or some set timeout is there. It will jump to the next code and start executing that. But once it get the flag from the Ajax code block or that site set timeout block that, hey, your data is here. Now come back and do whatever you want to do. Then the processor will switch back to that code and process that particular code. So this is how your code is not getting stuck in between and it is giving you the best to your end user also. You don't write a special code for async code. If you were writing, if you were using jQuery Ajax call, uh, you know that you are already doing the same and same goes with the set timeout and other things. Okay, the next topic related is callbacks. Callbacks is nothing special. Callbacks are somewhere every developer was writing in their code but they are not familiar with the jargon so as i mentioned in the async code that once that ajax data got the data it sent a flag to the processor that my data is here now what do you want to do tell me so that is particular a callback so in again moving to the jquery ajax request if you will see in that we get success error parameter those are the callbacks so Callbacks are uh, basically once you get the data on receiving that data or response from the server, whatever you want to do on that, that is the callback. Now, async and callbacks can be understood in a very simple manner, which is your McDonald's or any pizza outlet out there. How? You go on the outlet, you order, you place your order. After that, you move from the queue. You are not blocking the queue similarly basically you are the async code you got a token number that this is your token once you see on the screen that your token is there that is your callback and then you again go back in the code uh, sorry in the line and receive your order and start enjoying it so basically this is how async and uh, callbacks work okay so now where promise is getting set in this i'm pretty sure that everyone out of everyone of you already did a lot of ajax calls and xml http requests if you are working in javascript if you're working in a small project if you are dealing with like one or two or three api there's no problem you can use as many as callback you want which is fine but when you move to a bigger project you yourself will realize that handling this callbacks is a hell. Why? Because what happened is, for example, I have one callback of success. I got my data in that. On receiving that data, I want to do a second 
function on second task on that now that would be my callback 2 then similarly callback 3 callback 4 callback 5 so maintaining so many callbacks become hell okay i agree you will say no i can maintain i have done this job before too because this is not something new because when i get to know about promises i also gave the same points that no callback is not a hell i can re very well maintain callbacks all i need to do is i need to design my application well but no it's not true promises here to help you in solving these callback management system one thing for sure is that promise will not promise is not assuring you that there will be less code but it is assuring you the way you write uh, the way you maintain your code will improve how i will show you so i have made a demo where the let me go into the code okay the first thing is async code so what happened here is when i will execute this code first i will get console log hide <clears throat> processor will go into this it will see that it is a async code it will not get stuck here it will go and print hide too then it will go back here it will again wait that what is happening and after that it will print the content if you will see hi hi too please ignore these things because my service worker is working here and then after three three seconds it will say in timeout and then at the end i am done so basically this is how your async code work it will execute the first line then it will see oh it's an async code it will not get stuck here it will move to the second line after the this time here it will come back to it it will see okay now it's the timer uh, the it's the time that i should run this code it will run console log in timeout and after that it will run done function so this is how your async work now moving to the second example this is a very simple example where i am using vanilla js to do a ajax request and what i am doing is here is just concentrate on this here i am getting the data so what i will do once i will get the data i will for sure do some task here make the call or whatever i want to do after that i will start writing a lot of code inside it or i will start breaking it into the small functions basically everything is dependent upon first on the data i receive then this function that how i am modifying this data and then i will have back to back functions in this similarly here also if i am not getting the success request i have to deal with the error stages also that how i am going to handle my error stages i'm pretty sure that you are very well aware of this if you will move this code to jquery ajax request you will see that most of the pain area they already have taken uh, taken care of but again in that again this callback hell would be there why i am again and again saying callback hell because you will not realize until and unless you will move to a bigger project where you have to maintain a lot of apis a lot of data which is a lot of functions which is dependent upon that api result okay now the same function same code same example is happening here and this is how this is i am doing with promise you can see there is no difference in the line of code uh, the, the line of code are not getting reduced but the way we are managing and we are changing the behavior of our application is good so promise is a javascript object and promise always return you either reject or response so the thing which we were manually checking in vanilla javascript that we are getting a success or we are getting a reject is now taken care by promise by itself so now you can be relaxed so once you get the response you will do whatever you want to do and if you get the reject which means it's an error stage so the same example what i'm doing is when I, my ajax request is happening it will return me a promise and after that what i'm doing is i'm so this is a one of the syntax of promise promise dot then so once you receive the promise you need to see that what you want to do now 
so i got the response so i got the data i want to return that data always remember you need to return something from the promise now the beauty lies here now i have another callback and if you will see i don't need to pass the reference here whatever the parameter i will pass here it will just come here so this is how i can change my modify my data without giving any reference and for the error stages they have the catch so you just you just need to put dot catch and the error will come inside it by itself so this is how you are handling your callbacks by using then so always remember every time promise will return you response or reject response means success reject means error so you can play with that and you will always when you are dealing with the callbacks it's always promise dot then so this is how you are you are actually dealing with the promise and this is all about promise just a small recap promise is helping you in handling the callbacks and error stages it reduces your headache of writing the custom code that what you want to do in error stage what do you want when the response is there so promise is taking care of everything by itself now the next question is should you start using promise or not because when i started using when i get to know about promise i was very comfortable with writing the vanilla xml http request and jquery ajax request so for me moving toward promise was a little bit uh, tricky but the way industry is moving if you will see everything is moving towards the promise so for example i will take the service worker example even the service worker will be at the every event will return you the promise so if you will move to whether es6 and other uh, even the react library in that also you get promise in the response so it's better to get yourself in the habit of writing the promises in your code it will help you in future uh, this code demo i will be putting it on my github and my code pen so you can check there i will be dropping the link below this video if you have any feedback any suggestion just let me know thank you guys